Silkworm family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Danny. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell because I'm going to be posting this K through 12 reading challenge, but also my normal footage as well on Sundays. So you're going to want to know what I'm posting and when by clicking that bell. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please be sure to do that. It is at the underscore dancing underscore bookworm. And for there, I post full reviews and content of other bookish things. So if you guys don't know about this K through 12 reading challenge yet, pause the video right now click the link down below in the description or up here I will post it on the video somewhere so that you guys can go get all the information get all the parent information read through all of it and figure out what we're doing for what age groups if you have already watched that video then this is our high school age group so grades 9 through 12 in the US and we are going to be reading far from the tree by Robin Benway so today you have not had to read any of the book yet you your only job was to answer the pre-reading questions which are just assumptions about the characters. If you guys opened up that Google Doc, you saw there was a lot of discussions about what's going to happen in the book. And your other job is to find the book. So if you cannot find the book, please go download Scribd. And all of that is all of that information is in the past video. So if you haven't checked out that video yet, please be sure to do that. So we're just going to jump into the pre-reading discussion right now. So if you guys don't know what this book is about yet, it is about three biological siblings who were separated when they were younger um, through adoption and the foster system. So we have Grace, who is the middle sibling, and she has just given birth to a baby that she ended up giving up for adoption. Um, she decides to then go look for her biological family when she realizes she has as biological siblings, she reaches out to them first. She reaches out to Maya, who is a sarcastic, witty little sister, and she is kind of in this broken home situation where her family does nothing but fight all the time. Her parents also have a biological daughter, which makes her feel a little isolated and outcast because all of her family looks the same and she is the sibling who does not look the same. Then we also have Joaquin, who has been in the foster system his whole life. He has never been adopted. He lives with good foster parents currently, but that has not always been the case, and he has been bounced around from house to house almost his entire life. So Grace kind of gets them together. They meet up for the first time and Grace announces that she wants to go meet their biological mother. However, the other two are a little reluctant about that and Grace feels that she is kind of on her own but determined to do it anyway. So in the pre-reading stuff, I have a word of the week and I just wanted to kind of go over what the word biological means. I'm sure you guys have heard the term before and you know like all these different families, like dynamics and stuff like that, but biological means that you are related genetically, related by blood. So in this book, it talks a lot about different families. We talk about adoptive families, which are parents who get 100% custody over a child. Um, the state doesn't have any rights to them anymore. They are their baby at that point. Um, and then we have biological families, which is our word that we are working on. And that is the family that gives birth to you, basically, like a parent who gives birth to you, somebody who you were born and share the same blood with. And then we have a foster family that gets talked about in here, which is Joaquin's family. And those are people who the child is still a ward of the state. So the state has rights to take them away at any point. Um, they can kind of be taken back by their birth family if their birth family kind of gets their life together um he can like there's a lot of things that can happen when you're in foster care um the parents can choose to give up the kid if they don't want them anymore um so there's a lot of things that happen in foster care so basically the parents are just guardians like they take care of him but they're not a hundred percent responsible for him so if he does something wrong he's still a ward of the state and the family can kind of just be like oh we don't want him anymore kind of thing um and then there's also things that aren't talked about in here. So we have half siblings in the world, which is like you have one of a similar parent, but different other parent. Um, there's step siblings, there's step family, um, which is when you guys aren't related by blood, but you're related by marriage. So there's a lot of different family dynamics. So what I want to know is do you have any biological siblings and what parts of you look and act like them? So my brother and I are half siblings, which means we have the same mom, but different dads. Um, my brother's 10 years older than me and 
we don't look alike. Like I definitely look 100% like my mom. I have fair skin. I have like a couple of my dad's features, but for the most part, I'm very much like my mom and also share my mom's personality as well. My brother's a little bit more outgoing than me and my mom. He also has dark skin and when he had hair, he's bald now, but when he had hair, he had dark hair. So we don't really look alike. Um, but that can happen too, even with biological siblings as one sibling will take after looking like one parent and one sibling will take after looking like a different parent. So that's pretty normal too. Um, but do you guys have any biological siblings that you guys look exactly alike? Because I know a lot of people that that's the case. My mom and her sisters look so much alike that their daughters all look alike. So me and my three girl cousins actually look a lot alike because our mothers look alike. So... Um, so my next thing that we're going to jump into is the pre-reading questions. So question number one is, Joaquin is still in foster care, but his biological sisters have both been adopted. Do you think this will make it hard for them to connect or do you think Joaquin will be excited about having siblings? So I think... I've already read this book before, so I kind of know what happens with Joaquin, but before I read it, I kind of assumed that Joaquin wouldn't want any part of this. I thought, like, maybe he'd be like, oh, like, nobody's really ever wanted me because he's been in the foster care system his whole life, and he wouldn't really want to meet them, and it would take more convincing for him to meet. So that was my original thought. I obviously know how that turns out and if that hypothesis is correct or not, but that was kind of the original thought that I had about that question. Um... Also, I should mention, if you guys have not done the pre-reading questions yet, just pause this video, go ahead, fill them out. They're not super important to have done before I'm talking about it because you guys can have your own answers. But if you want to do the pre-reading questions and kind of follow along with me, make sure you pause the video, go do that now. There's a whole separate Google Doc for it. And then make sure that when you come back for the next time that we get together, that you have your questions done beforehand so that you can follow along. Um, so the second question is, look at the title, Far From the Tree. What do you think the title is going to mean for our characters in the plot of the story? What do you think it means in everyday life? So this is kind of open for interpretation. Um, I have two versions of this. So far from the tree, you hear the phrase a lot, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So I'm assuming that that's where far from the tree came from, which means that you are a lot like your parents. So if my mom is really rude to somebody and then I'm really rude back, they're going to be like, oh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Like you're just like your mom kind of thing. Um, or even in a positive way, like my mom was like some award-winning scientist and then I became an award-winning scientist. They'd be like, oh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, so I look at it like that, but I think that the fact that it doesn't say like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, it just says far from the tree, is that they don't connect super well with their family tree. So they have all been adopted into different lives and they kind of feel like they are as far and as different from each other as could be possible and along with that like as far and as different from their mother. The other thing that I think it could mean is you think of trees and they're very rooted and sturdy and solid in the ground and I think what we could get from with Far From The Tree is that these three characters have a lot going on in their lives. Their lives are a whirlwind and I feel like maybe like that far from the tree kind of thing is like they don't have any sturdiness. They're kind of rolling around all over the place, flying in the wind like a leaf, and they're just not they're just not in a good place where they're feeling solid and sturdy and rooted. Um, so I think it could be taken as either way. I also think that in everyday life, when we use the phrase far from the tree, obviously I said the apple doesn't fall far from the tree is the most common phrase used, but I think also that it could mean like you know, like the same thing that I was saying, like if I'm far from the tree, maybe it means that I'm just not in a good place right now or I'm not kind of following along with my family's wishes and stuff like that. So I think it kind of means the same thing for the book title, but also for what it means in everyday life. Um, but let me know your guys' interpretations and what you guys got from that question. Comment that down below. I'm interested to see what other people thought. So then it says using mixed media, two or more art forms, create a family tree. So I mixed drawing and graphics. So I took pictures from the internet and drew and then scanned the drawing in and put the pictures on. 
So I'm going to post that here. Um, I don't have a picture of my maternal grandfather and um, like I don't really have pictures of my grandpa my grandfathers in general but I don't really know my paternal grandfather because uh, he passed away beforehand and I didn't really know my maternal grandfather either so not because he passed away beforehand but because I just didn't know him so <laughs> um, so I kind of just kept it to the grandmas um, and then just put in like this little thing for the grandfathers but um, yeah I kind of just mixed a drawing and some pictures and that's how I made my family tree. So if you guys made a family tree, I want to see it. So, you know, comment it, send it to me, all those good things. I want to see what your family tree looks like. If your parents are cool with it being posted, I want to see what it looks like. Um, so then we're going to discuss, Joaquin still lives in foster care, meaning he hasn't fully been adopted and at any point he could be given away to a new family. What would you do if at any moment your parents could decide they didn't want you anymore? Discuss with them why they feel you're an important part of their family and how you would react if you couldn't be in their family anymore. Families don't always look the same. If this is a hard topic to discuss with your parents, feel free to talk it out with a friend, a coach, or someone you care about. Um, so... Basically being in foster care at any moment in time, I have already said this already in the video, but at any moment in time, somebody could be like, you gotta leave. Like, you can wake up in one house and fall asleep in a different house. That is how fast it happens. You are a constant moving little ping pong ball. So, um, one of the things, I didn't really discuss this with my mom because I just know why she loves me. <laughs> um, but one of the things I would say that my mother kind of notices about me and why she loves me so much is I am a huge help with the kids. So like I help take care of my nieces and nephew all the time and if there's like something going wrong I'm usually the one who's like with my mom. Like we like I always say I go with her flow. So my mom is very much like she likes things a certain way and I'm kind of more like okay whatever. So I just kind of go with my mom's flow. So that is why I think my mom keeps me around because <laughs> I am her, her go with the flow, her buddy, her sanity kind of thing and all of the craziness that we go through. Um, and what would I do if my family decided they didn't want me anymore? Well, first I'd probably cry because I love my mom and I love living here with my brother and sister-in-law and my nieces and nephew and animals and all that stuff. Um, but also I feel like I'm 28 so if my parents or if my mom was like, we're not gonna let you live here anymore and be like okay I'm 28 I'll go get my own place but I know that's not always the case for you guys so I want to know your answers if you feel like this is something you want to share go ahead because I'm interested to see what you have to say um so we're gonna get into section one stuff so for next week which is March 27th you guys need to read to page 125 guys I read this in a couple hours like up to page 125 and I am not the fastest reader so it is a really easy read um also if you guys are reading this on Scribd they have the audiobook version and the audiobook's pretty good so if you prefer to listen or if you like to listen and read along at the same time it is a really good option so uh, we're gonna get into the section one questions. I'm just gonna read them off to you guys and you're gonna kind of go through, answer them, and then we will meet again next week to discuss like we just did with the pre-reading questions. So question one is, what does Grace call her baby and what is the baby's real name? Why couldn't Grace's parents adopt Joaquin too? What is wrong in Maya's house? What did Maya's dad put on their car? That part of the story is really funny, so I hope you guys enjoy that little piece, <laughs> little piece of that question. Who are Joaquin's foster parents and what do they want to do? Where would Joaquin go back in time if he could? So that question, it's touched on very briefly in Joaquin's first chapter, but it ends up becoming a very important part of the book, so I want you guys to focus on that, okay? What was Grace's dad's high, high and low after meeting Maya's family? What did Joaquin, Maya, and Grace do for their first outing? What did Adam do that made Grace punch him in the face? So the Adam guy is not nice and Grace hauls off on him. So what did he do? <laughs> what did Maya find in her mom's closet? Then we have our little activity. So when the siblings meet for the first time, they all react to their nerves in different ways. Grace fidgets and doesn't say much. Maya can't stop talking. And Joaquin just goes with the flow while remaining mostly aloof. What do you do in situations that make you nervous? Which sibling from the story do you most react like? Write a journal entry about a time you were nervous and how you reacted. So just kind of go through a little, little tiny journal entry of a time when life kind of affected you and you had these nerves and stuff like that. And and um, 
just write like a quick little journal entry saying what happened and if there was like a sibling from the story that you really related to throw that in there. All right, so that is pretty much your guys' task for the next time we meet. And I hope you guys are enjoying this book challenge. This is such a beautifully written, emotional, but funny book. And I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do because I really love this book. That's why I chose it, even though I think, I, I can't remember if I read it last year or two years ago, but it sticks with me. This is definitely a five-star book for me and I'm really excited to reread it. So hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. Thank you so much for watching. Wasn't that a great video? Clearly books make me very happy. Now you can make me happy too. Click the subscribe button to follow my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you think I did good. And the notification bell will let you know when I post new content. Also, follow my Instagram for more book shenanigans.